Okay, right now we can't pause it. In fact, if I click on Martin Luther King right now, the speeches are going to overlap. I don't know if you can hear that, but the, the speeches are overlapping. So I'm going to stop the companion, at least momentarily. Now this way, you know, I, I get back to the companion and stops those speeches. Obviously, we need a way to pause the speeches and so they don't overlap. Okay, in fact, even if there was just one picture, we would want to pause, pause that one. So let's work on the MLK button. And we want to make it so when we click it, it will either start or pause. You know, so in other words, if it's playing, it'll pause. If it's not, it'll, it'll start it. Okay, so I'm going to go and grab what's called an if block. And these allow the app to make decisions. Okay, and I'm going to click on this little blue thing and put an else in there. Okay, this blue thing is called a mutator. And it allows me to kind of set how this if is going to look. And basically what I'm going to do is ask a question. And based on that question, do, do a different branch. Okay, in this case, the question I want to ask is, is the MLK player, is it playing? And, and the player component has this nice property called is playing that I can use. So if the player is playing, I'll do one thing. In fact, what I want to do is pause the, the speech. Otherwise, I'll go ahead and start the speech. Okay. So I'm going to bring this guy down here, and that, there's just some kind of connection problem. I can, I, I just need to reset the companion. But I've got the start here, and then I'm going to go back to MLK Player, and I'm going to choose the pause function. And I think we're doing pretty good. So when the MLK button is clicked, if it's playing, pause it. If it's not playing, we do the else, start it. Okay. So anyway, let's test this out. I think I need to reconnect with the companion. I'm going to choose AI companion. I've got my phone here, and uh, the projection got messed up, but let's, let's plug it back in. So I've got my phone, and I'm going to click Scan QR Code and scan that QR code on the computer, and it should bring up my app. Okay, good. So now all we've really done is I should be able to tap uh, Martin Luther King once to start it and again to pause it. Okay, that started. I just tapped it once. I'll tap it again. Pause it. Tap it again. Start. Pause. So we've kind of got this toggle set up where you can touch and to pause and start. Okay? We kind of want to do the same for Malcolm Player. So I'm going to show you how to copy paste. So I'm going to Command C on this block. Uh, with Windows, it's Control C. And then I'm going to Command V to paste. All right? And I'm going to bring this whole block over in the Malcolm button. All right, this wouldn't be too helpful because it's dealing with the MLK player, um, and we really want the Malcolm player. But the nice thing is there's these little widgets where you can actually change. You can actually change um, which component you're talking about. So I'm going to change these all to Malcolm player. Okay, and now I've got it where MLK button and Malcolm player, or sorry, Malcolm button are either playing or pausing their their speeches. So we're getting pretty pretty close. The other thing we want to do is when Malcolm is clicked, I want to pause MLK and vice versa. So I'm going to kind of copy this pause. All right, and when the MLK button is clicked, we for sure want to pause Malcolm, and then either pause or start MLK. And kind of the opposite, when Malcolm is clicked, we want to pause MLK and then go on with either playing or pausing Malcolm. Okay, so we're getting pretty close. Let me start my companion, AI2 companion back up. And once it gets started, we can test our app. Let's connect AI companion. And let's go ahead and scan the QR code. All right, and let's see if we can start and pause both of these speeches. So hopefully we won't have any overlap anymore. Okay, there's the, the app. Let me click on MLK. That's good. Now I'm going to tap... Uh, Malcolm. Good, it stopped MLK and started Malcolm. I'm going to tap Malcolm again, stopped him. So anyway, we can do some more testing, and you always should do, do quite a bit of testing with, with software. But essentially, we've got this app where we've got a couple pictures, and we can tap them to start and pause the speeches in, in kind of a reasonable manner for, for the user. So let's just, you know, take a step back here for, for a second. And, you know, we've got this, you know, somewhat a little more complex app than, than the I Have a Dream that we started with, okay? And in this one, we've got two event handlers, so our app 
consists of two event handlers. It deals with two button clicks in this case. And each event handler has kind of a sequence of operations, right? So we could have a bunch of blocks here. They go in order, one, two, three, four, five, whatever, and they all get executed, right? As soon as that button is clicked. Now there's also some blocks which are conditional, right? So I'm only gonna do this block conditionally, depending on some test, right? In this case, my test is, is that player already playing something? If so, I pause, otherwise I, I start it up. But this is kind of indicative of how event handlers look. They've got the event, they've got a sequence of operations, but each operation can be conditional, can be based on some you know, decision the app makes on whether to do one or, or the other, okay? And you know, basically this kind of set of event handlers with conditionals in them, this is what, what an app or really any kind of software program is, is made of, okay? So anyway, here's a, a quick intro to app building with App Inventor and event handlers.